CIET NCERT presents curriculum based series Dhwani Shala. So let's join in Dhwani Shala class 6. Namaste and hello to my dear friends. I am Dr. Nidhi Singh and today we are going to talk about class 6 geography textbook chapter 3 that is motions of the earth. In the last chapter we talked about the globe, water latitudes and longitudes, the important latitudes and longitudes, their importance and how to measure time of two different places lying on different longitudes. Today we will be discussing about the motions of the earth, how it rotates and revolves. Friends, I want to share an experience with you. You know what? Today, while I was traveling from my house to office, I was thinking how long this journey is. I have to travel so much for my workplace. I feel tired and bored up. Then suddenly, a thought came into my mind. Everyone has to travel. The rickshaw puller, auto driver, cab drivers, railway drivers, flight captain and the whole crew, captain of ship and the whole crew, all travel and even much more than me. Then I felt a little better. So, we all move, either sitting at one place or while moving from that place. How? What happens is that even we are not moving at all, but since the earth is moving, we are also moving. Isn't that magical? <laughs> yes, it is. In the first chapter, we got to know about the earth and its location in the solar system. We also got to know that the earth revolves around the sun. This movement is called revolution. The movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed path or orbit is called revolution. Not only this, the earth has a motion even on its axis, that is without changing its position. This is called rotation. So, rotation is the movement of the earth on its own axis. Try out this activity at home. Ask for a round potato from your mother. No need to peel that. Just take a potato and insert a thin stick or broom's stick in it. Try turning the potato by your hand. Assume the potato as the earth and the stick inserted in it as the axis of the earth. This turning around at one place is known as rotation. The axis of the earth is an imaginary line which makes an angle of 66 and a half degrees with its orbital plane. What is this orbital plane? The plane formed by the orbit that is horizontal is known as the orbital plane. The earth receives light from the sun, we all know that. Due to the spherical shape of the earth, only half of it gets light from the sun at one time. Therefore, portion facing the sun experiences day, while the other half away from the sun experiences night. If this is observed carefully, a circle can be seen. Try finding this circle by lighting a torch 
over your earth made up of potato in a dark room this circle that divides the day from night on the globe is called the circle of illumination this circle does not coincide with the axis do you know the earth takes about 24 hours to complete one rotation around its axis this is the reason we have a day consisting of 24 hours the period of rotation is known as the earth day this is the daily motion of the earth the period of one rotation of other planets can be called by their planet name say for example um, jupiter day a jupiter day is the one rotation that jupiter takes and do you know how long is it jupiter takes 9 hours 56 minutes to rotate once on its axis therefore a jupiter day is of 9 hours 56 minutes so short as compared to the earth day isn't it now think about a situation what would happen if the earth stops rotating hmm the portion of the earth facing the sun would always experience day thus bringing continuous warmth to the region the other half would remain in darkness and will be freezing cold all the time it will be really difficult for life to exist in such extreme conditions isn't it did you know the ancient indian astronomer aryabhat had stated that the earth is round and rotates on its own axis such was the scientific knowledge of our ancient astronomers as we discussed earlier the other motion of the earth around the sun in its orbit is called revolution it takes 365 and 1/4 day that is one year to revolve around the sun we consider a year as consisting of 365 days only and ignore 6 hours for the sake of convenience 6 hours saved every year are added to make one day that is 24 hours over a span of 4 years did you know this surplus day is added to the month of february yes thus every 4th year february is of 29 days instead of 28 days such a year with 366 days is called a leap year this is the secret behind february having leap year every 4th year find out when will the next leap year be by now you know that the earth is going around or revolving around the sun in an elliptical orbit notice in any picture of the earth that throughout its orbit the earth is inclined in the same direction we have discussed this while we were discussing about the axis of the earth right let us now talk about few other aspects occurring on the earth like seasons a year is usually divided into summer winter spring and autumn seasons which season is your favorite one or okay tell me which season you dislike the most i like the spring season the most also the rainy season 
ओके हैव यू एवर थॉट हाउ डू सीजन चेंज सीजन्स चेंज ड्यू टू द चेंज इन द पोजिशन ऑफ द अर्थ अराउंड द सन ऑन ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट जून द नदर्न हेमिसफेयर इज स्टिल टूवर्ड्स द सन द रेज ऑफ द सन फॉल डिरेक्टली ऑन द ट्रॉपिक ऑफ कैंसर दैट इज ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड हाफ डिग्रीज नॉर्थ एज अ रिजल्ट these areas receive more heat the areas near the poles receive less heat as the rays of the sun are slanting the north pole is inclined towards the sun and the places beyond the arctic circle experience continuous daylight for about Six months. I hope you remember that both the Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle are two important parallels that lie in the northern hemisphere. In this situation, which is experienced during twenty-first June, since a large portion of the northern hemisphere is getting light from the sun it is summer in the regions north of the equator the longest day and the shortest night at these places occur on 21st june can you guess what must be happening in the southern hemisphere during this time at this time in the southern hemisphere all these conditions are reversed it is winter season there the nights are longer than the days this position of the earth is called the summer solstice the word solstice is derived from the latin word sol sistere which means sun stands still After summer solstice let us now talk about another situation On 22nd December the tropic of Capricorn receives direct rays of the sun as the south pole tilts towards it As the sun's rays fall vertically on the tropic of Capricorn that is 23 and a half degrees south a large portion of the southern hemisphere gets light therefore it is summer in the southern hemisphere with longer days and shorter nights what happens in the northern hemisphere during this time the reverse of this happens in the northern hemisphere this position of the earth is called the winter solstice Do you know that Christmas is celebrated in Australia in the summer season? Why so? This is because while it is winter season in the countries in the northern hemisphere, it is summer season in Australia that lies in the southern hemisphere. Isn't that interesting to know? Apart from 21st June and 22nd December, there are two other dates in the year that are important and are related to revolution of the earth these are 21st march and 23rd september on 21st march and september 23rd direct rays of the sun fall on the equator at this position neither of the poles is tilted towards the sun so the whole earth experiences equal days and equal nights this is called an equinox the latin meaning of the word equinox is equal night referring to those two moments 
in the ear when day and night are equal in length so during equinox day and night are equal not just at one part of the earth but all over the earth on 23rd september it is autumn season in the northern hemisphere and spring season in the southern hemisphere the opposite is the case on 21st march when it is spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern hemisphere thus you find that there are days and nights and changes in the seasons because of the rotation and revolution of the earth respectively do you know the longest and the shortest days and the equinoxes were important markers in the annual calendar during ancient times as these were the points halfway between each of these days signaling as they did important activities in the agricultural season very early these points became ritualized that is rituals got attached to these as the occasions for feasts and celebrations friends try out a fun activity on any sunny day take a straight stick that is 1 meter long find out a clean and level place on the ground place this stick into the ground where it casts a distinctive or sharp shadow now the first step will be to mark the tip of the shadow with a stone or a twig or by any other means the first shadow mark is always towards the west see after 15 minutes and mark the tip of the shadow again by then it would have moved a few centimeters away now join the two points and you have an approximate east west line step 2 is stand with the first mark to your left and the second mark to your right you are now facing north this fact is true everywhere on the earth because the earth rotates in west to east direction there is an alternative method which is more accurate but requires more time set up your shadow stick and mark the first shadow in the morning use a piece of string to draw a clean arc through this mark around the stick at midday the shadow will shrink or disappear in the afternoon it will lengthen again and at the point where it touches the arc make a second mark draw a line through the two marks to get an accurate east west line in order to understand the things we discussed in this session let us try out few exercises first is choose the correct answers the first question is the movement of the earth around the sun is known as a rotation b revolution c inclination find out the second question is direct rays of the sun fall on the equator on a 21st march 
B 21st June and C 22nd December which one the third question is christmas is celebrated in summer in a japan b india and c australia can you recall now the fourth question is cycle of the seasons is caused by a rotation b revolution and c gravitation try to find out the answers to all these questions now we will switch over to another set of questions which are related to fill in the blanks a a leap year has dash number of days how many number of days b the daily motion of the earth is known as can you recall c the earth travels around the sun in an dash orbit which type of orbit what shape is it d the sun's rays fall vertically on the tropic of dash on 21st june tropic of what cancer or capricorn e days are shorter during dash season which season summer season or winter season now try answering another set of questions briefly on your own a what is the angle of inclination of the earth's axis with its orbital plane define rotation and revolution c what is a leap year d differentiate between the summer and winter solstice e what is an equinox F why does the southern hemisphere experience winter and summer solstice in different times than that of the northern hemisphere and next question is why do the poles experience about 6 months day and 6 months night friends these were the questions related to the things we discussed today I hope you must have understood about the motions of the earth that is rotation and revolution and different aspects related to it in the coming sessions we will be discussing about other topics of your textbook till then bye and take care you are just listening to curriculum based programs dhwani shala प्रोडक्शन असिस्टेंस जगबंधु जाना रिकॉर्डेड बाय बटी लैंगलिंगडो एंड प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय अजीत होरो दिस प्रोग्राम वाज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी न्यू डेली इंडिया